Hey everybody, we're going to be covering the 3D Print Exporter in ZBrush. So for this demo, I'm using my character that has multiple pieces. You can see that he has uh, two horns that have been um, keyed into his head here. And then there's also a starting point for a base. So we got four parts. And the goal of this tutorial is to set up a ZBrush scene where whenever you export your model, if you make any model changes, um, you can always update these pieces individually um, in your STL file and not have to worry about uh, the scale being wrong um, uh, for every time you if you 3D print like if you broke off his horn on your actual 3D print you could 3D print another one and you're confident that the scale is going to be the same so ZBrush currently does not have um, uh, a way to remember your ZBrush uh, 3D print exporting settings. So the best you can do is one, write it down um, at this moment. Uh, but there's another little trick that I found that's been pretty helpful for me doing um, characters, uh, especially ones made up of multiple pieces and ones that I come back to. So uh, what I like to do is append a cube and move it into place. And essentially I want to scale this cube to be exactly the size of this character. So essentially I'm making myself a bounding box. So let's go that way. And I'm using actually the translate based on this edge here instead of the scale. So you can actually turn on transparency and do this and do that side. And now we've built ourselves a bounding box. So uh, in, if you want, you can spend time getting it exactly the right, um, exactly the right height, but it's not too critical. It's just more to have an object in place that represents the size of your, of your, of your model, uh, overall. So, all right. So what we're going to do now is now that we have this bounding box and what we're going to do is we're going to always leave this box in our scene, in our S in our subtool. Uh, so when we save out our subtool, this box will always come in with it and you can just turn it off and you don't need it actually visible. Um, but what we're doing is we're creating a reference point for scale. And um, I'm going to divide this mesh as well. And uh, let's make sure we can sculpt in it. So yeah, sure. So what we can do is you can write on this mesh. We could say like, let's say 4.5 inches. That's our, that's our scale that we want to always export out this character. And uh, you can also rename this one here. I do that as well. So I just go 4.5 inch. So the next thing we want to do is um, go and open up our 3D print exporter here. Turn off the visibility on all these other models and turn on our box and then say update size ratio. So now we got uh, the values of which um, in relationship to each other. So we wrote 4.5 inch here. So let's type that in here, 4.5. So now we get the, the correct scale uh, bounding box for everything else. And uh, what we can do is turn that off and turn on. So what, we're, what we want to do is turn off each individual piece and export them one at a time. So we're going to do selected. And another thing I like to do is always export in millimeter and not inch. Um, all the software that I know of always prefers to work in millimeter. So I always convert that. And this number here, you can always write that down. So see how it changes to 4.49999? I might actually write that down four point four nine 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 my nines are terrible using my wacom okay all right so we're going to go ahead and export each one of these out so let's go ahead and export the horn and we'll go that's the um this left horn and we'll go ahead and export the right horn the only reason why I'm exporting out these individually is because I might have to print them separately or at different times. So instead of exporting out one giant uh, STL, which also has a file size limit, 
software doesn't like to work with file sizes bigger than 150 megabytes so um, you can get more resolution and you have to decimate your model less if you have a separate STLs. so uh, base all right that's it so I got those exported okay so we got the, the character in here and um, we will load in the R horn and all right so we got these export at the right scale and uh, you can see that um, um, we can rotate these around and they fit more or less what they would be into um, uh, let's see that goes to that side so yeah so you can see that these would fit in nicely and um, if the scale was off you'd probably be able to tell pretty easily so that's all that there is to it to remember the exporting scale um, I would say always remember to export in millimeter because uh, like cloud netfab defaults to millimeter um, makerbot stuff defaults to millimeter so um, you know work in whatever you're comfortable with um, I would export out at a millimeter standard and it makes it a lot easier. So thank you again for joining Mole3D in this tutorial. Hopefully using the 3D print exporter in ZBrush will be a lot more easy for you to use. And uh, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, definitely head over to our website to see more tutorials. And uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time.